Minister, I'll start on the same subject that, we, that I started with when we last had a debate uh, a little under two weeks ago, I think. At that stage, I told you that I felt it wasn't good enough that schools had had no communication on reopening of schools from March the 12th until that date. Now, since then, while there's been a lot of discussion on this, in some respects, we're not much wiser. Confusion reigned last Thursday and Friday. Uh, we told Sarah McInerney at 10 that blended learning would be a reality, then went on to prime time and told us that you wouldn't accept a half return to school. Uh, and then the Taoiseach the following day seemed to revert to the previous position, telling us that not all students would return, at least at the same time. And now you're saying that you're going for the maximum return of students. So, well, obviously, it's welcome that we know that it's still the plan to return to school on a normal date. Neither parents nor teachers know exactly what that means. The reality is that we have the most overcrowded classrooms in Europe, anyway, already. 28 children to a teacher, and that will make our return to school buildings uh, far harder than in most states. It's an indictment of the governments of recent years that we are in this position. Parents know that, but they're frustrated and they're anxious, and they want to see education returning to something like normality. And despite everyone's best efforts, and I want to acknowledge once again the incredible work being done by teachers and principals and their staff, it is a fact that children have lost out, particularly students from disadvantaged backgrounds and children with special education needs. Many of them are struggling desperately with the change to routine, the lack of socialisation and stimulation. It has meant that they have fallen back. There was one case that I saw that just uh, that stayed with me, uh, that I saw on RTE of Zoe Hines, who had progressed to be able to spoon feed herself, but can no longer uh, do so uh, due to the lack of contact. I see we have a dedicated debate on the July education programme next week, and I look forward to that. But this needs to be a big priority for the standard school year as well, Minister. So, Minister, my questions. In relation to the reopening schools, has the Department now at this stage communicated directly with all schools on the reopening of school buildings? And will the Minister speak frankly on this occasion? Whether the reopening will be full or phased? I think parents deserve an honest answer. If there's going to be phasing, then tell us, please. I'll come back with more questions. Very clear um, around the public commentary uh, in relation to school reopenings. If the current health guidelines stay as they are, we are in a position. We're in, we're in a position where you'd be looking at a partial reopening. But if you listen carefully, what I had to say in my public commentary, I am working with through my officials, um, through the public uh, health officials in the Department of Health, to look at different advice, which they're learning all the time from. European international experience and, and monitoring that advice. So I'm confident, and to say publicly here today, Deputy, I'm confident that that advice will change. And I'm also in a position to say we will be in a better position before I make the announcement at Cabinet as to what that advice will be. So it was very, very clear what I said. The modelling we did around uh, current health advice would mean a partial return. But because we are engaged with the health officials, because we're constantly getting new, new evidence, we're uh, learning from the likes of Denmark, who have uh, primary school children back, we're learning from Greece, we're learning from France, who have 15 back in the classroom, 15 students back. I'm learning from the likes of England, Gavin Williamson, who I was speaking to uh, two weeks ago, learning from the likes of Minister Weir in Northern Ireland, who I spoke to yesterday. So we're going to learn from those experiences and just to reassure people that it's our intention in the Department of Education to maximise the return of students back in the end of August and September. There's no uh, ambiguity around that. That is our intention, but obviously we're going to be guided completely by the health advice. But at the same time, the health advice was very, very clear. When Dr to Tony Holohan uh, briefed us recently, he said it's their job to give advice and guidance. It's not their job to do, uh, to, to do a risk assessment. And obviously, that is the job we're doing now. And the time frame, and I know you, you said schools haven't been notified. The reason why schools haven't been notified yet is because we're waiting on this advice. I'll bring a memo to Cabinet next week and after next week at, at that time, I'll publish the advice, and that, that's when the principals will, and uh, leadership in the schools will find out. It's all very well, but like, I mean, some communication should have been possible, at least since the 12th of March. Schools deserve some kind of communication, some kind of indication. I think that they should have got that, and they still haven't got that, so far as I'm aware. Staying with the reopening is... That's not true. There's, there's, there's ongoing any communication. School I've spoken to, any school I've spoken to 
has not had direct contact from the Department on reopening. They may have in the last four or five days, but up till then, they hadn't received any contact. I'm telling you that as a fact with any school I've spoken to, and I've spoken to about 20. Uh, staying with the reopening... But, but can I just uh, to ask a question but back? Like, if, if we don't have the advice, if we don't have the guidelines, if we don't have the instruction, we, we, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to go back to principles with a half story. Next week, we I will think, have know, the full know, guidance I, I think, on the publication. Sorry, no, Minister, no, I, I think it is quite reasonable that you go back to schools and you say, Look, this is the process, this is what we are, this is where we're waiting for, this is the criteria. There is things that you can. There is messages yes, and, and there preparations is, that yeah, can happen. Yes, and there is. No, it's, it's wrong to say there's no communication between schools. The, 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 school, the schools and the school representative bodies are in constant engagement. That is not true. There is engagement. What is what I am saying here very clearly, in terms of what the September, uh, the end of August, September will look like. We're not in a position until next Friday. Uh, Link didn't talk to Cash Decor. Yeah, I, I'm going I'm to have to truncate the rest of my contribution. Unfortunately, I was going to come in on a few issues. Um, first of all, calculated grades, Minister. PQs that I'm getting back today, that I got back today, tell me quite clearly two things. If you can't get a calculated grade, there is no other option. If it, there's not going to be a written leaving cert before third level admissions. Those students who can't get calculated grades, they deserve some kind of plan B. It's a small cohort. I believe something should be done for them, whether it's an online uh, assessment or oral or something like that. Something has to be done for them. It's unfair that they could potentially miss out on a year of third level. Uh, Minister, I've written to you asking for the exact statistical model for the school profiling. If you can respond to that, please. There's also, Minister, about 800 schools listed as requiring additional accommodation. Um, many of them are or were going through planning uh, before that was slowed down by COVID. One of them is a new school in my own constituency, South the Educate Together. Uh, it's in its second year. Uh, they may not get planning in time to deliver the accommodation that they need. Can you ask local authorities to prioritise these applications? Uh, and then finally, Minister, it's reported that 25 million additional will be needed for schools uh, for hygiene. Parents are already having to pay maybe 10 euro a month or 100 euro a year uh, for the cleaning of schools because schools are underfunded. Minister, I ask you, please provide the funding, uh, or I predict that it will be passed on to parents, parents who are already hard-pressed. I'm afraid they'll have to be responded to. to